What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time bringing you a video about Sandland, an open world action adventure due out later this month on April 25th. Right now, it has a public demo out, which is where I'm getting most of this footage from, though I will say right up front, the demo itself is somewhat limited in terms of gameplay. They only give you a small area to explore and you don't get to interact with much of the side content or even the main story setup. But that's not a huge concern to me, mostly because we're already aware, at least in large part, what that main story will be because the world of Sandland is actually an adaptation of a manga series by the late Akira Toriyama, who passed away just earlier this year in the very beginning of March. But with that out of the way, let's actually talk a little bit about what Sandland will entail. So if you're unfamiliar with the manga series, this game puts us in the role of the fiend prince Beelzebub, the prince of a village of demons who live in a vast desert alongside many human inhabitants, all of whom are fighting against the local king for the simple access to water because the king is hoarding all of it, prices are only skyrocketing, and obviously everyone needs water. Thus it falls to our character, alongside his demon cohorts, to take the fight to the king to secure water for everyone, which is what forms the bulk of the story. What makes Sandland interesting though, in that regard at least, is that it's actually going to extend beyond where the manga itself ended, which means that later into the game you'll actually be in a vast forest which has its own set of problems you'll also have to deal with. From there though, let's talk gameplay. This comes down to running around as Beelzebub with his companions, his personal assistant, if you will, a demon named Thief, alongside a Sheriff Rao, which I may or may not be mispronouncing, all three of which will have their own skill trees as they run about the world and level up, increasing their skills, making them more effective in hand-to-hand -hand or vehicle combat. So there are some basic RPG elements there, but it doesn't look like anything too crazy or deep, as most of that seems to be attached to the vehicle combat. As you've probably seen on screen up to this point, Sandland is going to feature many different vehicles each of which is tailored to a particular task, if you will. You got your motorbike, which is very fast and obviously great for getting around, and then you have your more melee-oriented robot that's great at actually punching through enemies, alongside a tank that is, well, a tank. And there's even a couple not available in the demo, like one that is supposed to help you jump up to great heights, which is important in a very rocky, cliffy environment. But these individual vehicles can also be customized, with parts you'll be finding as you journey throughout the land, which can change up the type of weaponry, etc. available to each individual vehicle, and of course there will be visual customizations at the same time. Now vehicles are, I would say, pretty central to the gameplay. The game seems to expect you to use them even in dungeons, with sometimes you encountering little environmental obstacles that require them. And naturally, that means fighting a lot of enemies in these vehicles too, which I would say is borderline necessary for the larger ones, which are very difficult to get out of the way of, though you will obviously also be able to travel on foot and fight things that way as well, utilizing all your accumulated skills. Now, your party, if you want to call it that, is present for this. You can activate a few abilities for them here and there, but your control over them appears relatively limited. Now, I think what's going to wind up being make or break for this title is how fun this world winds up being to explore because as I mentioned in the demo you can't go into towns and we are locked into a relatively small area which means we only really get to see a handful of dungeons, but even that is enough to get an idea of how it works. Basically, there's radio towers around. We're going to go to them, fix them up if we can find the appropriate parts to do so, which is going to give us access to information about our surrounding areas and then presumably content to go take care of. And that exploration, tied to any meaningful side content, I think is going to make the bulk of the gameplay outside of the main story. Now, while this is an action-oriented game, there is also supposed to be a working stealth system, but that doesn't really get a lot of play in the demo either. However, in things like the trailer for the game, etc., they show you sneaking around an enemy camp and presumably making even more use of this, so I'll be curious to see just how involved that system winds up being at the same time. And the very last thing I want to leave you guys with is that at some point you will be fixing up a base called Spino, Spino, something to that effect, which will involve rounding up exiles in the desert to come move there 
growing both the town and what it can do for you, which I think will add a certain dynamic element to the gameplay potentially, which sounds intriguing. Though for the sake of this video, I'd say that's just about everything there is to mention. Broadly speaking, for myself, I think the art is pretty gorgeous, as you might expect, given the creator of the world, and in that regard, it feels very smooth to wander around what is available to you, given that it's primarily one biome. I also think a lot of the creatures are pretty fun to see, and the actual movement is pretty good as well. Once you get the hang of it, the keyboard was a little bit off, I will say, but that's hardly anything new. Overall, I'd say this one seems like it has the potential to be a decent bit of fun. I haven't decided whether or not I want to review this for myself yet. That's actually why I was taking a look at the demo to begin with to see how I felt about it. And truth be told, I'm still on the fence about covering it. So if you want to see more of this, let me know. Let me know what you think about it while you're at it, which naturally means to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.